over the last uh, couple of years now, hasn't it been, right? About a year. He uh, started a program in which called Titans of Nuclear, and I started seeing it. And when Ed Beginnis got it, I said, Ed, you know, I want to be a Titan of Nuclear. It's pretty nice. So he got me hold of, hold of uh, Brad, and I convinced him that he ought to come in and, and, and talk to me anyway. And sure enough, he came in and with his tape recorder and his his uh, video. And uh, he, what I found out was he had gone around, he was going around the world talking to influentials, many of which are in this room, to uh, basically learn about, he was committed to nuclear energy, wanted to learn more about the industry, wanted to help the industry. He thought the best way was to go around and talk to people and hear their stories. And this wasn't sending out staff. He went on, every, he did every one of these interviews. He went out, how many have you done now? About 125. 125. I, in fact, I went online today to try to figure out how many there were on there. I started counting them. I got up to about 75. I said, well, I'll just ask Brett how many he's done. <laughs> But I haven't watched all of them, but uh, I look forward to uh, showing them to my kids and also so also viewing them because uh, it, is, it is the stories, it's the personal stories of how people got involved in nuclear energy, what they're doing, what they think is important. And uh, it has been a tremendous contribution. And uh, I understand that you've got more in mind. And But as I said, every one of these involved him traveling around the world, going to various uh, places going out to labs, going out to uh, various sites and or offices, and then personally putting the time and effort to do it, and then editing them all. So he told he told me that my interview was so good he didn't need any editing. But uh, <laughs> in any event, so uh, without further ado, I wanted to present a special achievement award to the Titans of Nuclear, accepting Mr. Brett Kugel, the Managing Director of Energy Impact Center. Come from the council. This comes from the Advanced Reactors Summit Six. So, I think this is very special. Thank you. Uh, thank you, and and thanks to everyone in this room who's been on the show, and everyone who I hope still will be on the show. Um, I like to be the one asking questions, so I'll keep this brief, but I did want to share a little bit more about my story. You know, we're here in San Diego, which is it's a desert, yet it supports millions of people, and that's because over the last hundreds of years, or hundred years, and billions and billions of dollars worth of infrastructure investment, we figured out a way to get water to all these people. But this concept of day zero, you know, that we've seen in South Africa, where all of a sudden a major city might run out of water. I mean, just imagine if we all this infrastructure in San Diego just disappeared overnight. The problem is with climate change, even small shifts in precipitation can create that kind of scenario where you have millions of people in an area that all of a sudden don't have access to the same water infrastructure that they expected and the, and the infrastructure that helps create food to feed those people as well. And over the next 20 or 30 years, we might see this type of water scarcity, this type of rapid drought over the course of even just a few years is all it takes to make it an area uninhabitable to live. And that's what we saw in Syria too. Mm -hmm. And so this is what's coming, and the problem that I saw, and I'm getting to how I found the nuclear space, but the problem that I saw was that even if you did what all the climate advocates wanted and you said, okay, we're going to decarbonize the entire electricity sector, I mean, that doesn't, I mean, the entire electricity sector, globally, worldwide, like, that doesn't do anything. That doesn't do anything for climate change, right? Electricity is just 25% of carbon emissions, so you're still adding 75% of what we did, what we're adding already. And now let's, let's take that one step farther. Like, wh like, what do you want? You know, all the climate change people, what do you want? Do you want every single sector 100% completely decarbonized? Fine, let's imagine that scenario. We're still in a state where we've already got this 400 parts per million greenhouse that we've already built. So climate change is gonna keep accelerating. 
right? Like the heat that we're adding to the system is, is from the carbon that we've already put up there, and that's gonna keep building and building things. You're gonna get warmer and warmer, and even if you have a small change in precipitation patterns, right? And so geoengineering doesn't help this either. If you have a small change in precipitation patterns, you could force hundreds of millions into a situation where they don't have access to water anymore. And so I was looking at this situation two years ago and I said, well, okay, the problem shouldn't be how do we reduce our carbon emissions by some point in the second half of the century. It's like, how do we reverse climate change? How do we actually pull carbon out of the air? And how do we do that fast? How do we do that with just in a 20 year period? And if you look at the problem that way, and you're evaluating all the different electricity sources based on their ability to account for their own carbon footprint and pull that carbon out of the air while still supplying to a growing world that needs energy and more energy per person, which is a good thing too. Nuclear is the only one that can do that according to the laws of physics. So that's how I found the nuclear sector. I ran that analysis. And I didn't know, I'm not from the nuclear industry, I was a mechanical engineer, so you know, I could do some math, but that, that's how I came to meet all of you guys. Um, and I wanted to understand what it would take to deploy nuclear at a scale that could actually reverse climate change within the next 20 years. And so that was the origin story of me going around and trying to meet all the titans and what you guys have done in terms of helping share your experience to a much broader audience beyond the nuclear community has been awesome. Yay. And so I just wanted to take another opportunity to thank all of you for helping me put this program together. Thank you. Yeah.